Developed by Private Moon Studios and originally released in Hungary in 2006 and then worldwide in 2009, Yermajak's Ring tells the story of American journalist Jonathan Hunt as he attempts to explore his past tied to several mysterious letters addressed to his great-grandfather. He travels to his mother's birthplace in Hungary, a very picturesque town called Eger, to track down the ancestors of the people named in the letter. The setup has a very interesting premise that not only involves Jonathan Hunt's past, but may also have ties to time travel. Does Yermajak's Ring stand tall with the best of modern full motion video games, or is it a throwback to days of horrible design and poor acting? Let's hit play and find out. How you doing fellow geeks? GamerDad79 here and welcome to another full motion review. Today we are taking a look at the very, very interesting Yermajak's Ring. Now I say interesting because Yermajak's Ring came about in a very unique way. Uh, normally I don't go into the background and behind the scenes type stuff when it comes to games because I am more concerned with how the game performs, the story, the gameplay, the, the frame rate, all that other type of stuff, how the game plays for you and myself, the players. Um, however, the background of Yermajak's Ring is just way too fascinating to pass up. So. Without further ado, let's make our selection and go to the next scene as we explore the Hungarian town of Eger in Yermajak's Ring. In Yermajak's Ring, you take on the role of one Jonathan Hunt, who has a knack of introducing himself like James Bond. After receiving a book titled Eclipse of the Crescent Moon as a gift from his great-grandfather, Jonathan discovered two letters hidden within the pages. They were addressed to his great-grandfather from a strange Hungarian scientist named Abre. In the letters, Abre claimed to have discovered the secrets to no less than time travel itself. So as far as gameplay goes, uh, Yerman Jack's Ring is a standard uh, point-and-click adventure game with all the pitfalls that come along with that. Um, the, some of the goals aren't very clear, and you're not exactly sure what you got to do to advance to the next scene, right? A, a lot of the old-school adventure-style games fall into those types of pitfalls where you just can't figure out what to do. Like, there was one scene during the game where I legit just had to look at a plaque didn't have to click on it, didn't have to do anything to be able to go to the next part of the story in the game. It was very, very vague on what I had to do in this. Um, and like I said, unfortunately, the game falls into those um, old, uh, uh, very archaic styles of, of adventure gameplay uh, and, and in full motion video gameplay. Uh, so in some places it almost feels like you're playing the old mist games with, which is very, very vague and a lot of stuff that you got to do in that game. Um, and sometimes requires you to, to look at a, uh, you know, a, a walkthrough just to figure out what you got to do next. One of the most interesting facts about this game is how it came about. The city of Eger was looking for alternative ideas for promoting their town, using the popular novel The Eclipse of the Crescent Moon as the book and its author, Gar Gardoni, I can't say that name right, Gardini, there you go, I think that's how you say it, are strongly related to the town. Developer Private Moon Studios was given the opportunity to make the game by winning a competition. I absolutely love how all the locations in the game are actual locations from Eger. You get a real sense of the beauty and history of this town by playing the game. You know, essentially, Yerma Jack's ring is one big advertisement for the town of Eger in Hungary, right? And it works. It's, it's a very unique way to promote this town and promote tourism because this is, you know, as far as I know, there's never been a video game created simply to promote a town to to promote tourism in a town and while that may seem like a cheap thing to do or a, a you know uh, um that you think you would think the game would be uh not very good um i'm pleasantly surprised and pleasantly happy to say that the game is actually very good the story which is what you play these types of games for anyway is very interesting and it kept me very involved 
all the way to the end. Now, I said, the gameplay isn't that great, falls into some archaic pitfalls, but it makes up for it in the game itself. The story takes place over five days, where Hunt, Jonathan Hunt, searches for various clues and hidden messages all throughout Egger in his search for the truth about those letters. You meet with a lot of very interesting characters that all feel like real people and not just actors playing parts. All your interactions are recorded in your journal in case you miss an important conversation or just need to go back and review something. So I did notice um, a few issues with the game, but nothing that deterred from my enjoyment of it, right? Uh, one, one issue was uh, at one point the sound from the intro would just keep playing during gameplay. And from what I was able to figure out was that if you skipped the intro, right? If the, when the, you know, the, where it's talking about, where it's showing you the developer and the studios involved. If you skip that, which you're able to do, the music that normally plays during that part will continue to play during the game. And the only way to fix that is completely exit the game a hundred percent and then come back into it. Let the entire intro play, which admittedly is not very long. It's just a few seconds. Um, and then start the game. Uh, not, game breaking uh it's not something that completely derails it but it's definitely a, a bug that should have been picked up by this point in time uh i don't know if the developers are still supporting the game in any way shape or form there is a sequel which i plan to play at some point in review but i don't know if the developers are supporting the original anymore uh which is maybe why this bug wasn't picked up um the other thing i and it's not a it's not a bug or a problem, but something that I disliked with the game was that the map feature, the fast travel, wasn't available everywhere you went, right? You had to literally, in some places, you had to exit where you were. So let's say you were in the hotel where your character is staying at. You had to leave the hotel to access the fast travel map. But in some places, it didn't do that. Right. Well, what does it matter that you have to step outside your house or or a house or a location or whatever to access the fast travel map? Why couldn't you just access it from inside? Sometimes that just became frustrating because I would figure out where I needed to go next, what location I needed to go to. But then I would have to go through all these steps because the way the game is set up is you see a still picture. Right, and it's like a lot of these older full motion video games. You see a still picture, or even uh, you know an adventure game, and you have to click. You want to go this way, so you click on this side, then your character turns and it goes that way, and you got to click forward, and then you got to keep doing that until you get out of your location. And that could be not frustrating, but annoying because you shouldn't have to do that. You should be able to just open up your map, click the fast travel, and go where you need to go next. It just artificially adds more time to the game, which the game isn't very long. I said it takes place over five uh, five days. Each day could take you a few hours each, maybe not even that, depending on how easy you pick up the clues. So it's not a very long game, um, but it's just something that was annoying throughout playing the game. Without going into spoiler territory here, um, the fact that this is a low-budget affair is very apparent during the end scenes. Uh, however, that doesn't take away from the very interesting story and well-thought-out characters and interactions. You know, obviously, um, the developer, uh, Full Moon Studios, is not a major developer. They're not anything big. They, I, I believe they only created this game and the sequel to it. I can't remember it off the top of my head, the name of it. Uh, but you could tell that it's a low budget affair and for a majority of the game that doesn't matter because um it's all about the beauty of the locations you're at and the character interactions and the way these characters are um and as i said earlier the the actors played their parts beautifully um i thought they were very interesting characters um most people you meet are very well thought out and almost everyone you meet is a major character in some way. They all play some major part, some major role in what you, as Jonathan Hunt, 
are trying to accomplish. And they all they all feel fleshed out. You go back to all these characters numerous times, have new interactions with them. There was a lot of of stuffed filmed for this game. You could tell that the developers had a major passion for this game. And like I said, unfortunately, you could tell it was a low budget affair at the end of the game. There was some special effects that were used that you could tell just were not either they're not either the de developers were not very versed in using special effects or they had to use very low budget type stuff for the game. Doesn't detract from the overall enjoyment of the game doesn't detract from how good the ending of the game was and how interesting the ending of the game was but you could tell it was a low budget affair final thoughts developer private moon studio set out to create a new and interesting way to promote the small town of egger and they accomplished just that by creating a unique and fun full motion video game while the game is slightly held back by old game design choices, the intriguing story, interesting characters, and factual history of the town make this an enjoyable experience overall. If you are looking for a unique full motion video experience, playing Yermajak's Ring while learning about some of the history of Egger is not a bad choice. All right, guys, that is it for today's video. Let me know in the comments section below if you've ever played Yerma Jack's Ring and what you thought of it. Um, if you're not a subscriber to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Hit that little bell to know when I upload new videos. We all know that YouTube is not exactly uh, a big fan or very supportive of small YouTubers. So this way you'll know when I upload new videos and you'll help support me. Um, if you enjoyed today's video, please give me that thumbs up. The thumbs ups always help. They're a big, big help. And if you are a fan of my content and the channel overall, please share the channel to help GamerDad79 grow. If you want some more GamerDad79 content, be sure to check me out on both Facebook and Twitter. I will leave the links to those in the description box below. And make sure to check out the videos that are coming up, coming up on your screen around now. So, until next time, fellow geeks, I am GamerDad79. Keep on geeking on.